I remember as a young kid, I don't know if I was in Sunday school or in church, or, but at some point, I remember memorizing and, and hearing a song where we sang this very idea, search me, O God, know my heart, try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting, which is verse 24 on top of that. And I remember as a young kid memorizing that verse, that verse has kind of just stuck with me because of that song. And, and when I read that just outside of context, if I just take verse 23 and I read that, I say, well, it's an invitation by the psalm writer, by David, saying, God, here's what I want from you. I want you to come into my life and search me, God, know my heart, try me and know my thoughts. And see if there's any wickedness, if there's any deceit in me, and lead me in that way everlasting. But, it's, but on, on the outset, it appears to be just an invitation. God, search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And that seems like all it is. However, if we go back to the first verse, which lays the context for what we're getting into in verse 23, the first verse of Psalm 139, it says this. It says, to the choir master, Psalm of David. And then it says this in verse 1. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. So way before verse 23, David writes and he says, here's the deal. Lord, you have searched me and you've known me. God, you've already done this. You, you've, you've searched my heart. You've known my thoughts. So he writes that in verse 1. Then in verse 23, he says, search me and know me again. After saying, God, you've searched and know me. Now he's, he's inviting him to do this again. So the question is, why is he inviting that, that statement at the end when he already knows that God has already done that? And there's one of two possible explanations. The first is the psalm writer knows, like we know, that we're not consistent. It could have been, God, I know you searched me yesterday, and I know that you knew me yesterday, but today my attitude changed. Today my attitude isn't where it was yesterday, and so God, I'm inviting you again to come and search me and know me, because I know I need to be evaluated all over again. That's entirely possible, and probably is part of what I believe is the bigger answer. But here's the bigger answer, and I think what David is trying to communicate to us today. Is he says, God, in verse 1, God, I know that you searched me. I know that you've known me. But down here in verse 23, I'm asking you to do it all over again because of four words. Help me know me. God, you already know me. Help me know me. You see, we live at this surface level of understanding of who we are. And we think, well, as long as I accumulate all this stuff that I think that I like, I'm going to have some measure of satisfaction. And then we get all that stuff and we think, but I, but I still don't have satisfaction. God, why is it that I still don't have the satisfaction that I was longing for, that I thought that, that this thing was going to bring? I thought a lunch bowl was going to bring satisfaction. Or when I got older, I thought the camper was going to bring satisfaction. And it's not there. And God, I'm asking you right now because I'm at a desperate spot in my life. Search me. Know me. And then, God, help me know me. God, I'm inviting you into my life to search my heart. I'm inviting you into my life to go through my thoughts. Because I don't always understand myself. And so my question, my, my request of you is to help me know me. 